Today's video is about inverters and whether you should buy an off-grid specific inverter or a hybrid inverter, whether or not you're connected to the grid, because a lot of people are using hybrid inverters for off-grid application. Also, we're gonna cover the differences in hardware and software, and also the idle consumption and cost. So there's lots of differences, but in the end, people are still using hybrids for off-grid scenarios, and we're gonna find out why in this video. Now before we dive into the nitty gritty details, let's talk about the main difference between these inverters. An off-grid specific inverter is for off-grid application only, but it's still designed to work with the grid. But when an off-grid specific inverter is connected to the grid, it's physically impossible for it to push electricity out into the grid. The grid connected to an off-grid inverter is for battery charging and UPS backup, and that's it. A hybrid inverter is designed to push electricity back into the grid legally. And if you have a net metering agreement with your utility provider, you can either get cash or you can get credits or you'll get nothing at all. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of providers and some are good and some are bad. So hybrid inverter pushes the electricity back out into the grid and an off-grid inverter cannot. Now let's start the comparison. First, the price. An off-grid specific inverter for its output will always be cheaper. For example, if you buy a 6,000 XP and you want a 12,000 watt output, you'll buy two inverters, put them in parallel, and you'll have 12,000 watts for only $3,000. If you want a hybrid inverter like the 18K PV or a Solark, you're gonna spend over $5,000 for that same output. So when it comes to output, the off-grid specific inverter wins. Next, we're gonna talk about life expectancy, but I need to show you the difference in person. So we're gonna move this camera around my shop and I'm going to show you the differences in hardware between a hybrid inverter and off-grid which can change the longevity of the device over time. So currently this is the most popular off-grid specific inverter, the 6000 XP. For its split phase output and how much you get for the money, it's very hard to beat, but it's very different than hybrid inverters. First off, how it cools itself. You have cooling fans, you have heat sinks, and the circuit boards are exposed on the inside. And that's pretty typical and that's not an issue, but it's not outdoor rated. And the manufacturer told me that the warranty is only five years because of that. This is not a sealed device. So the longevity is not gonna be as good as other models. Also compare this to a Victron, a low frequency transformer based inverter will out live this off-grid specific inverter always. But it depends on how you treat this thing. If you have clean air, like a HEPA filter running next to it, and you have it mounted in a cool, dry location, and you're not trying to push the limits of the surge capacity, this will last a very long time but it's not designed the same as a hybrid inverter. You just have to be a little bit more careful with this and mount it in a good location, and then you should be okay. Now here we have a hybrid inverter called the 18K PV by EG4. It's very similar to a Solarc 15K on paper. And the difference between an off-grid specific inverter and this is this is outdoor rated and it's sealed, including the cooling system. There are cooling fans on the bottom and an air intake on the top, but the heat sink is separate from the printed circuit boards. The boards on this unit and other hybrid inverters is sealed, so dust and other things cannot get inside and it will actually increase the lifespan significantly. So the warranty on this one is twice as long as the 6000 XP, and some of them are even longer. Hybrid inverters are designed to work outdoors for a very long time. So where the 6000 XP is only rated for five year warranty, this one is rated for 10 years, and you pay for that in the price. Now let's talk about mounting. Typically for off-grid specific inverters, they're gonna be smaller, and you can put them into parallel for any output capacity that you want. And I think that's amazing because you can connect it to drywall anywhere you want with some drywall anchors, and you can add more as you grow your system. And for me, to build this system was very easy because they're so light. Now now let's compare that to a hybrid inverter. Now mounting hybrid inverters can be quite difficult. There are some hybrid inverters that are small and integrated with battery
batteries like the EP Cube or the Tesla Powerwall. But if you buy a dedicated hybrid inverter, it's going to be very large. This one was very hard for me to install by myself. I had to use a table lift and I had to mount it securely to the studs. And there's some hybrid inverters that weigh more than this. So you really have to think about it when you're building your system. Now these inverters are nice because you can throw up more units on your wall, but the idle consumption will increase. And that's a downside of having off-grid specific inverters, unless you have a transformer-based Victron. So for transformerless based 6,000 XPs, it's gonna cost 50 watts per unit to keep your system turned on. So for two of these, that's 100 watts all day long. The 18K has the same output, but it only uses 70 watts. And over the course of 24 hours, that's 1000 watt hours. And if you had a third inverter, you're gonna have 150 watt idle consumption because each one has its own control circuit and you have to run them all at the same time. So these are cheaper for their output, but they cost more in idle consumption. But solar panels and batteries are pretty cheap now, so that might not matter to you, but it's something to keep in mind. Also, these are the most efficient transformerless ones around. Previously with the MPP models, they were 70 upwards of 110 watts per each unit. So imagine if you had three of the new MPPs, it would be 330 watts, which is crazy. So these are still very good in that regard, but it's a big difference over time. Now, another interesting difference is when you have multiple units, you have multiple MPPTs, and each unit has two MPPTs. So that means that with two of these, you have four. And if you have lots of solar arrays, you might want to buy multiple units to put into parallel because the hybrid inverters won't have as many. Like on this one, we have four inputs, but two are in parallel. So it's about the same as a 6,000 XP, but the 6,000 XP is a lot cheaper. For the price of this thing, you could almost get three of the 6,000 XPs, and then you would have six MPPT inputs versus only three on here. And that's the same case with the Solark and other hybrid inverters. The off-grid specific inverters typically have more MPPT inputs, but it depends on your system. Not many people have six separate solar panel arrays. If you only have two, this will do just fine. Now let's talk about wiring up the system. If you have multiple units in parallel, that's a lot more wiring and you have to have a combiner box to put them all together. With the hybrids, typically everything's in one box. And the hybrids have a transfer switch. On this one, you would have this box go to a transfer switch and then to your house's panel. And that can cost quite a bit of money. On the hybrids, like the 15K and also so the 18K, you have a transfer switch built in. You can put this between your meter and the panel and you're done. It's a lot easier to wire up a hybrid inverter than a whole bunch of small inverters connected in parallel with the panel. And this stuff is not cheap. If you were to install your own transfer switch, you're gonna have to wire up multiple boxes and it can be upwards of 500 to 1,000 extra dollars. And on the hybrids, they're all built in. So when it comes to money, this is a big determinant factor. If you only need one inverter to run your whole house, then a hybrid is going to be what you'll probably go for. Now, typically with off-grid specific inverters, you're either not going to have a display or it's going to be very simple. This one is black and white. It's not a touch screen and there's not much information here. There's enough to set it up, but for monitoring and data logging, you're going to have to use the app with the Wi-Fi dongle. And my biggest complaint with this unit is this display. Display. I hope they can swap it out one day and make it look nicer, but you don't really need it for off-grid because there's not that many options to change. So it does its job, but typically for off-grid specific, you're not gonna have any pretty displays, software, or interface. Now on hybrid inverters, the interface and software is much more advanced. If you wanna do time of use, you can do it on the display itself, or you can do it through the Wi-Fi module. Even on the app, there's more more options for this. And this is very common.
common with hybrid inverters. They all pretty much do this. Next difference is most off-grid specific inverters do not have a PV disconnect switch built in. You had to buy this yourself and wire it up separately. But now on the 6000 XP, they actually have them built in and they also have the circuit breakers. So that's why everyone loves this thing is it's very easy to install and to scale your system and it's the lowest price. But previously with all the MPPs, you had to wire all this stuff up, but that's not an issue anymore. Now with hybrid inverters, they've always had the PV disconnect switch because these are code compliant and designed to be installed in residential. And these used to cost a lot to wire them up to off-grid inverters, but now that we have the 6000 XP, that's not an issue anymore. And everyone buys that thing. I can't think of anything that has really good competition besides getting like a Victron or something. But for transformerless based, the 6000 XP is pretty much what everyone's buying right now. But currently they all have a disconnect switch, so that's not a problem. Now when it comes to the 6000 XP in parallel, the line imbalance is not possible. You can only do 6,000 watts per each leg. So these are split phase output, so you'll have two legs. So if you wanna pull 6,000 from one, that's okay, and you can pull 6,000 from the other. But on the hybrid inverters, they have line balancing. So you can actually put a larger imbalance on soul arcs and 18 kPVs. And with Lux Power, they have their own line balancing technology. They can get up to 8,000 watts on each leg and that's pretty similar to the new Solark with the new update. So these have a better capacity for line and balance compared to the off-grid specific inverters. So that was a lot of information, but at the end of the day, I would say that the number one factor is gonna be how much money is in your pocket. If you are on a budget, you cannot beat the 6000 XP, especially compared to what we've had in the past. Um, the idle consumption, the amount of output you get for every dollar you spend, um, how many MPPTs you get, the features, the Wi-Fi, everything. You cannot beat that thing for the money. But you get a lot of good stuff once you start spending money, specifically increased longevity, having a sealed unit with a warranty that is double the amount of time of the 6000 XP, it just costs a little bit more. And if you're installing that thing on the side of your house outside and you wanna use the integrated transfer switch, um, you will save a ton of money and then they'll all end up costing about the same amount. So if you need a transfer switch, you're better off buying a hybrid inverter that has a transfer switch instead of trying to jerry-rig your own thing with a bunch of 6000 XPs and a bunch of combiner boxes and transfer switches and then having all of those on the inside and then having your panel on the outside, it's just illogical. Also, the hybrids can be permitted and legally installed anywhere and you can have a net metering agreement with your utility but people are still opting for the hybrid inverters for off-grid situations because you can hook them up outside and forget about it and you know it's going to work for a very long time even though it's transformerless. So for example, let's say you're in a cabin and you put a 6000 XP on your wall. If you're in a small tiny home or cabin and you hear those cooling fans all day or you're running them at night for some reason, um, that's going to drive you crazy. You could spend a bit more money just get a hybrid inverter and throw it outside and you'll never have to look at it or hear it or anything. And it will work really well. All the hybrid inverters, because of how they're certified, they're designed to work for a very long time and a lot of them don't have any issues. My 18K and my friend Solark, we have zero issues. You hook it up once, you're done. It's so simple on those hybrids because they're designed to be installed anywhere and for any electrician to install it. And even though they cost more with all the features, they cost about the same as the 6000 XP unless you're not using any of those features. If you're trying to build a small mobile system and you need the most bang for your buck, just go with any off-grid specific inverter. Now, if you want an inverter that will last forever, none of these are gonna be a good idea. If you want this thing lasting 50 or 60 years, you're gonna to have to go with a transformer based low frequency inverter like a Victron or a Schneider. They cost more, they're very heavy, and they cost so much more actually that you could just buy an extra 6000 XP and if one of them breaks you just throw another one on the wall. 
So it's getting so cheap now and a lot of manufacturers are doing transformerless inverters. And that makes them very popular. People can build a system for a lot less money and get all the features that they wanted. And if you take care of it and you have it in a cool, dry environment, those things will last a very long time. But at the end of the day, it's pretty much how much money you wanna spend. And having all of these systems at my house, I would go for a hybrid inverter. Once you have one set up and you're controlling it with your phone and you can do everything and you don't have to worry about it, it's a sealed contained unit, you're gonna like it. It's a really nice unit. Once you buy it, you're done. But it depends on your budget. How much money do you actually have in your bank account? Um, if you want to make a small system with a critical loads panel and you want to run that with a 6000 XP on a budget with like two batteries, you can still have that as an option. And that's going to be what, $4,500? The whole system will cost less than an 18K. And if that's all you need, then that's all you should spend. But also consider the other options and what you get when you spend that extra money. Because I didn't think it was worth it at first, but now that I actually have the stuff, it's actually kind of good. And it will last a long time. And the warranties are twice as long as the other inverters. So think about all the factors when you're trying to design these systems. I think most people, if they tried all the stuff I've tried, they'll probably buy the most expensive hybrid inverter that they can. For example, I have the EP cube for my entire house. I didn't have to do anything. You just stack those batteries, connect it, done. Any electrician can do it. When you're connecting multiple units in parallel and running conductors outside because you have to have these units inside, it's more to think about, you'll save some money, but at the end of the day, it might not be worth it for you. So lots of factors to consider. There's no one size fits all, but you should consider all the options because there's quite a few. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. That was my opinion. If you disagree, please let me know what you would prefer. Um, are you guys 6,000 XP only or MPPs or whatever? Let me know and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.